Hey, hey, listen. We had to do a special segment <laughs> to talk about the way Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes got their ass shellacked by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. There was a lot of hype surrounding this game because last year, in his first season as head coach of the Buffaloes, Deion Sanders came out and whooped up on Nebraska when he was projected to lose. He was projected to win this year again and continue that tradition and got his butt beat down by, what, 21 points, uh, three touchdowns. Um, so a lot of people are coming out now talking trash about Deion Sanders saying, uh, the, you know, the hype train surrounding Deion in Colorado is coming to a stop. And, you know, they basically feel like this confirms all the sentiments that were expressed about Dion last year and then leading into this year. How many games is there in college? 12? How many is it? Depends on whether you make the play. The whole, the whole thing, shout out to Dion, man. Dion is doing great. You know what I mean? A lot of people hate to see him rising. Dion has been prime time. He has been the man all his life, and people hate to see it. Now that he's becoming a coach and an influential coach that's making a lot of noise, people despise that. They're preying on his downfall like people wanted to see Mayweather lose. You know what, I'm, you know what I mean? But Dion is more positive. He's more inspirational. He's going to keep rising at the end of the day. But, like I say, to my point, people will say a nigga make an excuse, but allow Dion to go to a real a USC, a LSU, a Bama, or one of these teams where, where players actually want to go play football, Dion will make one of the greatest impacts. He's already making one of the greatest impacts. Niggas wasn't talking about Colorado or none of that shit before Dion got there. So now they're hating on him by he's not the actual player. He's one of the greatest players to ever do it. So to think his knowledge is not enough, it's not falling back all on him. He can call whatever play and do whatever he wants. But if it's not orchestrated by the players, there will be no success. I feel like people aren't going there because, I mean, when you look at USC or LSU or whoever else, there's this traditional type of football, I feel like, um, sentiment that those – those colleges give off that Colorado doesn't necessarily everything Notre give Dame, off. all these other these yeah. these spectacle like brands of big, colleges. You, I feel like that's you, a big reason as to why you, people don't want to go there. And then on top of that, they're not really doing that good. So again, the 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 showboat and all that, I fuck with it. I think it's cool and, and being flashy and because you you prime time. But if the if the record doesn't show. Eventually, niggas are gonna stop checking. But we have been, you been we, to Colorado? No, we got. Been he the have young, you been to Colorado? Yes, he's a young buck. Niggas don't want to go to Colorado. It's like ninety nine point nine percent white. The population. That's a huge reason why niggas don't want to go to Colorado to play. Let's be real. Black it's cold people as hell. don't want to go. Where it's no cold. black people. When I went to Colorado. I was in the mall getting my glasses fixed. They said, hey man, be careful. They just had a Klan's meeting. I'm like, what the fuck you talking about? Yeah, the KKK. They still out here trooping. But we. But this is what they told me in the mall. But, but, so that's a huge reason. But you niggas a young, don't go you there. a young buck. Colorado has a great football history in the 90s, the triple I offense where they they would come out and run the ball the whole game, didn't never throw it, and they were winning. I think Colorado got either won a national championship or got close to winning one doing stuff like that. But I want to. I'm hosting this episode. Colorado guys. was never like a U.S. <laughs> yeah, stop it, man. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, stop it. Cap. Cap. Colorado was but never a joint. And, and, and let me even say this: if if right. I, if I'm a player actually looking to aspire to go to the NFL, and you sit four teams out here from USC to Bama mm -hmm. to Colorado or LSU, Colorado will not even be existing in my mind. I'm going to go to these other schools and see their programs and know this is my best choice for my future and my family. I'm not choosing Colorado just because prime time is there. You know what I mean? I, I would like to work with prime, but at the end of the day, this is not the best choice for me. And on top of that, I got to risk even getting that starting position wherever you go over there. You might not even be running things over there. So it's it's like he, like bro just said, people don't want to go over there. Not just the fact that it's the college. It's the living circumstances you have to think about. You're out here in California enjoying the weather, enjoying the women, enjoying everything that California brings versus Denver, Colorado. Like you said, the weather is freezing. Majority of people that don't look like you. And you talking about the clan out here. I got to worry about all this shit while I'm playing football. Nigga, fuck I, that. I think, I, think, I think people are over... Like, you're overblowing this situation. You can say that. This man has a great team. The only thing the team is lacking, if you watched the game yesterday, is an offensive line. And I've always been that's one who's partial. Lack, that's what they lacked last season no, as well. Here's the, listen, listen. That's why it's like it's I believe. Out, I believe 
The only mistake Dion is making is he's not being making enough effort to make the program look like it's inviting to all demographics. Because let's be real, I played football. I was the captain of every defense I've ever played on in college and in high school and all that. You need big white boys for the middle, for the two positions at guard, left and right guard. Black dudes do well at tackle because we got quick feet. We can keep the outside, right? Mm. You need two big-ass white boys to protect the quarterback with the center. Dion is putting black people in those positions. Traditionally speaking, how many black offensive guards are there even in the league? There's not. White boys are willing to knock heads in that interior like that and get a push off the line. That's all Dion needs. I don't Dion think needs, I don't think Dion is going off for that. I don't think he's I just. Really think I don't he think is. he's doing that. He benched his own fucking son. So to I sit here and show that. favoritism, I don't think he's. No, doing he that. benched his son because he got almost got hurt. No, he benched his son because for I, f- I forgot the other reason. I think he was either late or something. He showed up to practice. Oh, you know, oh, he showed, he showed, he showed up to the meeting late. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he wasn't even late. He said the meeting maybe started at 9. His son showed up at 8.55. He said, you late, nigga. You not playing. And he made an example out of his own fucking son, which many men wouldn't do that. Yeah. So I don't think Dion is showing no favoritism about nothing. He's actually allowing these players to compete in practice and be who whoever he feels is the necessary person in that position. I just look at it like even in the NFL, right, when you had Lamar, uh, Lamar Jackson's name, right? right. Like anytime we put our flavor on something, especially with football, from what I see, like niggas, like the football organizations just do not fuck with it. And I feel like that's a big deal of it too. You got the coach there with the chains and the glasses. And again, a lot of people yeah. are African-American. That's sort of the demographic he is um, promoting to. I think the rest of college football to a certain degree, is mad about that. And again, if, if I'm the big white boy that want to go do ever, where am I going to go? You're not attracted I, to I'm that. I'm going to go to Colorado I don't, I don't, or I'm going to Bama where, you know what you're I mean? Not, I, don't, I, don't think it's, I don't think they're just mad at him. He's prime time. He's been this way all his life. But some people don't like a... a, a I'm not, even gonna, I'm not even gonna call him just arrogant. I'm gonna call him confident a or showboat. Negro. Like, like I said, yeah, they hated that. The they hated, they, they, they hated it, be. but he was a winner. I, you know what I mean? He's winning in life. He's winning as a father. He's winning in all aspects. And to not take a Hall of Fame Pro Bowl person to take advice from as a coach is crazy to that's me. That's wrong because but, players are not always good coaches. But no, no, Dion is a Dion listen, is great Dion at is, both sides of the not, ball. Dion is proven to be a Dion is a great coach. The problem with Dion in that program, they are not putting enough emphasis on the recruitment at the offensive line, specifically the guard position. Like, I play Do defense. we know this or do we know that people I don't want to play this? I can, no, bro. You, it, listen, do you know how many kids are in high school who wish anyone would come talk to them who are like 360 strong? I, you'd like... Nigga, it don't there's, matter who wishes. There's some, listen, <laughs> right. No, who's, listen. Who's, who's available? To no, you know, like. you have to. No, you have to go find talent. Who can compete at these levels? You have to go find talent, and I don't believe Dion is taking that on himself. But I this is the problem. Has, on, but this is the problem. Assumption from niggas want Dion. I know it. Niggas, that niggas, that I know it. Doesn't that? Hey, doesn't but look, but look, the he's, this is coming out of thin air right now. No, it's not. But niggas want Dion to do every fucking thing. The reason, even if he's a specialist at corner, a kick return, punt return. He know the quarterback. He know the run. They want him to do everything. This is why you have lineman coach. This is why you have wide receiver coach. Let me say this. Dion is the fucking head coach. That's his job. Look, I was at Compton College. Old Ron. Don't compare Compton College, bro. No, let me listen. I was at Compton College on the field. Old Ron, the dude who was the head coach for LSU before he went there, he was at Ole Miss. He came to Compton College in Compton and went around, shook all our hands. Good to be out here with y'all today. We looking at a couple of y'all guys. Y'all out here doing good. Bro, we went 0-10. He took four people from Compton and took them to Ole Miss. Three years later, he was winning the national championship at LSU. I'm saying this from experience. Listen to what you just said. LSU, right? Listen, if Deion Sanders could go to any JUCO, where they even more proven, or high school in the nation and say, I need one or two Guards, offensive guards who could get some push off that ball and protect my son. I'm telling you, he would have over 10,000 people. Let me tell you, and, 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 and let me, and let me ask you, let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Even if he goes and asks these kids, or are, are they the elite of that class? This is what Deion is looking for. Are these the elite linemen? Because the elite linemen are not going to just necessarily go there. They're going to go where elite linemen usually go. The, the best, places where they have the higher percentage of the going best, to the NFL. The best players, most times in football, don't even go to college, and most of them end up going to JUCO, JC. So because most of them don't got grades. 
I'm telling you, just like Prop 48, Fresno State, when they were balling, what did they do? They went and got all the kids that the other colleges rejected based on grades. So if Dion re adop adopts that mindset, he can put people there who can play the position. Also, the reason where it's not coming out of thin air, because he's had this same problem for two years in a row. The first year, no one expected him to come in with a porous uh, offensive line. So they got caught off guard. But in the second half of the season, when they realized, hey, they can't block nobody, he didn't win no games. He came back into the next season with the same problem. That means one of two things. Either the coach of the offensive line is ass and needs to be fired, or Dion is not making sure okay. they're getting quality okay. recruits so at that me, position. So let me say this. So do we give Jim Harbaugh the same smoke? Because we watched Lamar Jackson go year in and year out with a right. bullshit line. But niggas don't say shit about what's going on over there in Baltimore. The, the, and this is on the NFL level. The, but when it comes to Dion, niggas is mad about... Him mm. not doing everything strictly pinpointing. These let, NFL players. Yeah, let, let's be real. Dion's getting more scrutiny because he's, he's getting Dion. more scrutiny. That's all I'm saying. If that was a regular yeah. coach, they'll be like, what's the organization doing? What are they yeah. doing? What's well, the line I'm not, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? What's the offensive coordinator? No. Yeah. They wouldn't be saying just no. the head coach. No. It's strictly In, because it's Dion. No, it's, Sanders. listen. For one, I do believe he's getting more scrutiny than anybody else. But you got to understand, in college, the head coach has all the power. And Dion is one of those coaches who demands, as a part of him coming to work for you, he wants total control of that program. Yeah, Even the true. AD can't tell Dion shit. And that was a part of his contract. Here's what I'm telling you. Harbaugh didn't get criticized because why? One, Lamar Jackson signed up to be a running quarterback, which means you don't need such a good offensive you interior. You need a great line. Listen. What listen. are you talking about? What game is one in the, the trenches, problem is, when he won an NFL, When listen. he won an NFL MVP, he was showing his arm. Hey, look, he wasn't just running quarterback. Okay, let me make my, yeah. let me, Even though, go let ahead, me make go my ahead. point. <laughs> listen, Harbaugh, Lamar Jackson was, was winning MVP and all that stuff while he was running. Here's the issue. You have different lines. It wasn't that Harbaugh's line wasn't good. The line was not big because you needed linemen who could move so they could go downfield to, to block for Lamar Jackson when he would take off. Once Lamar Jackson said he's not going to run anymore and he was only going to be a pocket quarterback, Harbaugh went out and got them big boys for the middle to defend him. You know, so you, you, know, you, know you know, half the runs that Lamar Jackson big runs was because the pocket broke down. Yes. Yes. It wasn't because he wasn't trying to throw in a pocket. Yes. It was because it broke down and it forced him to run. He wasn't just always... Lamar Jackson said it himself. He doesn't want to just be known as a damn running quarterback. This is why he proved himself and became MVP more but, than once. But his pocket wasn't breaking down. You got to... Why are you smoking rocks? Listen, I'm trying to... It's just like Cam Newton. It's just like Cam Newton. What's Cam happened, Newton was the most hit quarterback. Man, listen. Cam had trash listen, line. Listen, we're not doing no, that. No, listen. You guys, line you guys never played line. So I'm telling you what's happening. The line it wasn't breaking down for Lamar Jackson. The linemen are moving upfield as a guard. Cali said he over with listen, I, shit, No, man. as a guard, as a guard, you I play both. You Good get your, you engage in your first <laughs> block. Your job with someone like Lamar Jackson, you engage in the first block, you turn the defender, then you move to the second level to block the quarterback. That's what was happening. To block the quarterback. To block the linebacker. That's what was happening. I'm on your shit today. Look, block, <laughs> look, to block the linebacker. This is how offensive lines work. Here's the issue. Shador last year was a running quarterback. Now he stand mostly in the pocket. I love him for that because he, he? he stand up in that bitch like a trophy. Now he needs a line that can block, that can stay on a block for three to five seconds so he can get the ball up. Actually, Dion's team, every other position is beautiful. He could go down their national championship with them other positions because they all work hard. His only problem is his offensive line and his defensive line, too. They're too small in the interior. Yeah, but how do we know he didn't give the power to, to the linemen coaches to, hey, I got faith in you, which is why I got you here. I'm trusting you to figure this out. Recruitment we know he has the power. Recruitment is or always he went out there. I'm saying we know he got the power. It's not always. Or he went it's out there and nigga said, I'll, I'll go to other schools. That could have definitely happened. That's all right. I'm saying, No, too. head coaches do Because to say he's not You're doing nothing. He brought, no, another, he brought another Hall of Famer over there on the defense. Was that Warren Sapp mm -hmm. is over there helping out them linemen from offense and defense. You know what I'm saying? So he's doing his parts of he cannot be in every place at once. If I'm a dominant corner or a skilled position mm -hmm. player, I'm going to mostly deal with skilled positions. I'm going to hire people to deal with the linemen for him. This is all you have to do. Exactly. Is go the recruit dude, linemen. Did but they just get a lineman, uh, the, the, the first round dude mm -hmm. with, the, with the braids? I'm trying to remember his name. 
They they brought him into uh, Colorado. I, I don't know, you, but he Warren brought Sapp, Shanta, I mean, No, I just nah, said no. Nah, I'm talking player. about he brought Warren Sapp as a coach. Listen, the yeah. issue with Colorado and Dion highlighted this issue when he was at the other school, Jackson State. He said, when you go up to the higher level, because they asked him if, if, if they thought Jackson State could beat a Big Big Ten school. He said, no, because it's the trenches. Then big boys up in the front. We don't got the size to match it. The problem with Colorado is they are too small up front. Their biggest player on D-line is like 285. Bro, I was in college at 310 playing D-line. So when I'm thinking of a dude in the interior at 285, that dude is getting moved the fuck out by a big-ass white boy that's 360. You're not matching him, especially when all he got to do is go forward on you. And if you looked at the game, they got driven off the ball every time by Nebraska. So all Deion needs to do, he has a great team. His skill positions, I love those dudes. Travis Hunter, uh, the other dude, number five. I forgot his name. Uh, he, they, they just got, or last year they got, what's his name? Jordan, um, it's right here. I'm not denying. Jordan Seaton, which is number one O line. Yeah. Class of 2024, commits mm-hmm. to Colorado. But that's but what not is he? Enough. He's a tackle. What oh, is he? okay. okay. What is he? He's a tackle. It don't matter. He's still in the offensive line. You, no, need, you need every position. I know, what you're, for passing. I know what you're saying, but that, exactly. But he needs he needs a complete offensive but line, period. No team ever. Okay. So you're no, team, no team ever does nothing without a complete offensive line. But what everything that happened with Dion them, it, every time Shadur got sacked or got rushed, Look at it. It was always a blitz coming yeah. up the middle. His outsides are good. His tackles are quick on their feet. His, his his guards, they suck. The center, there was one play he just got ran over. Like, that doesn't happen in football. So what's that, the overall that, that analysis Shit, of I don't know, team I what you believe the answer is? The answer is he needs, to, he needs to take it upon himself as a person who has watched 20, 40 years of good football. Go get your guys, Dion. Go over to Nebraska. Go to the farm out there in Iowa. They got big corn-fed white boys. It would be an honor to play with you, uh, Mr. Sanders. And that's what the answer is. What y'all believe the answer is? Shit, I don't got one. White boys in the end. Listen, yeah, I'm going to be hunting with you. Like, I can't, I can't I just question Dion. I don't know what he's doing and what he's not doing. So to sit here and say he hasn't been trying, like he just said, they recruited linemen. So to sit here and say he's not doing that. But I ain't got no answer. But, the, but, those, but those are, there's two rules in football. There's two rules in football. Hey, interior interior <laughs> offense, white boys. No white boys on the skill positions on defense at all. That's for football. And if you look at college, you will not see no white corners. We see, but no we see, if you go, but, if you go to white see, corner, it's over. But we yeah. see, we see for we see for <laughs> years. Lie. But we seen for years, Bama had big black offensive linemen. Yeah, that was pancaking niggas. Yeah, it, it don't matter. Just equate to a white but, boy. But guess a, who, a, a black, a hey, black, a black, no, no. a black offensive lineman the same but, size as a white boy would guess, demolish a line. But guess so who, it does not matter about who, that. He got to throw white in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you're good at blocking, you're good at blocking. Listen, no. But guess who those. Black, big, black corn-fed dudes came up under. White coaches who were also big-ass white dudes who played good at the interior. See, if you're going to have the right coaching... Carl, you trying to make it sound good. No, no. If, no, if you're going to have the right coaching, you can make anybody into what you want them to be for the most part. But when I'm talking about where the person comes in and they damn near ready to go on day one, so you only got to coach a little bit, go down there to them schools, white... Like, listen... If you got the dudes who got the technique and the fundamentals, you don't need them to be so humongous. I played in high school. We played against. So college. how many? So this 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 is my other point too. Yeah. Like you said, going down to them schools, if they're yeah. already down there, grew up down there, uh-huh. know these coaches maybe from Pop Warner to high school to college. That, why yeah. do you think they will leave that environment from their family and everything else to come play in fucking Colorado? Be- because, the, because when they, when they're already down there with their friends, their family, and a yes. better school, be- why would I leave that to go to Colorado? Because where they are, they're a dime a dozen. Where they're going, they're rare. They're I, I get, okay. I get, what, I get what you. That's why a white boy, I get what you're saying, but majority of them are not going to do that. Why would a nigga go to Alabama to play for uh, Nick Saban when he could go to Miami? He go to okay, USC. And majority, he could go and, party. And, and majority of people that's coming up in California would rather go play in USC than go play unless it's yeah, Bama or exactly. LSU or something that's, like that's that. Niggas right. is going to stay out here. Why would I go somewhere else if SC gave me a full scholarship? Yes, exactly. So burn, what I'm t- burn, oh yeah, so what get, I, so what I'm time. telling you is just like we thinking like that. Those boys is already in the cold. They already in the flatland out in Midwest. So going to Colorado for them ain't nothing. That's a five hour drive for them. So the answer so is get a get a get a decent line. He's bringing he black dudes. Some white boys. He's bringing <laughs> right. listen. He's bringing black dudes from Miami and L.A. 
to the snow of Colorado. How you Uncle that's Ruckus not even in sports, not. girl? No, that's not. crazy work. <laughs> no, I'm just realistic. Say, just get, no, listen, it don't matter what the race. Get, get some big bodies <laughs> that skill. You could be Samoan. You could be black. Exactly. You could be white. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what. You could be Hispanic. And if you a big body that can move bodies on the line in the trenches, coach, coach you need to go get no. you. Coach Prime. The shit he said proves that I'm right. Because remember when he was talking about the different things he looked for when he recruited people? Country fair white boys no, are a force look, on the line, though. He, I'm going to give you that. He, was letter, he said, look, if you want a defensive player, make sure he come from a single mother he did say that. home. He did say that. Because he's more hungrier to prove himself as a man. Oh, okay. He said, if you saying. want an offensive mm-hmm. player, a quarterback, a receiver, he said, make sure that person come from a two-parent home because they smart. They got the support system. They could think and they and they don't fold under pressure. So this is football. It's the slave side of football that people don't want to talk about. Is. There is definitely a certain characteristic that gives you the advantage. And I'm just being real. Go look at the NFL. When you're in college, you want your team to reflect the NFL team as closely as possible. Go look at Sarah Gusso, uh, big ass fucking Howie Long. They're there for a reason and they want a prototypical person like that. Teddy Bruschi. Those dudes. Remember back in the day, white boys. Teddy Bruschi is a middle linebacker. Yes, but I'm telling you, it's a type. It's a prototype. They look for people who emulate those they features. They want to do dirty work, hit hard. And they just, want you to come from so that I'm gonna look for, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look yeah. for the Ray Lewis's then and the Ed Reeds and the for, Brian Dawson. You go look for Ray yeah. Lewis for coverage t- with blitzing power. You're not looking for Ray Lewis to stop the run because historically Are you he's smoking horrible. rocks? Ray what Lewis are you talking about? All right, man. Ray y'all. Lewis was stuffing holes. <laughs> Listen. What? Historically, <laughs> historically, listen, man. All right, I, that conversation I, over no, on this one. Listen, listen, ain't no disrespect to Ray Lewis. Shout out to Dion. Look, if you look at Ray Lewis, Ray was if you crazy. Look, look if, if you, you Ray Lewis, don't stop if, the no, run. Listen, nuts. if you look at Ray Lewis, <laughs> Ray Lewis highlights are all this: smashing people in the open field on coverage, catching interceptions, and sacking the quarterback. If you and watch stuffing stuffing the fucking run. run, he's smart. He's, you he's watch, known for stuffing right, the run, and I watched he, him he for for years. You just lost all credibility with that one. He makes tackles in the open. You field said Teddy ahead. Brewski is, mm-hmm. is stopping the run more than Ray Lewis. Better than Ray Lewis. Yes. Man, are you crazy? Can't cover. Can't cover the Look, let, Let's wrap this one up, man. Okay. Shout out to Dion. Let's see what Colorado do. Yeah. We, we could revisit this. In the middle of the season, because right now they what it's one and one. Game. Yeah, one, it's only one, two one games. One. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah don't go on. too we crazy. Two games. Yeah. yeah, let's yeah. see. Towards the middle of the season, we'll get a better analysis of what they looking like, and you can better scrutinize Dion and him not getting enough white boys. That's why he's the host. That's why he's the host. The viral way, man. We out of here.